reaction. Jonathan Hodnig from Capitalist Pig Hedge Fund, also a Fox News contributor, and Melissa Armo from the Stock Swoosh. Guys, you know, I've been talking about it all day. There's this disconnect between what Wall Street was doing and what Main Street was doing. Main Street is spending. I think Wall Street's finally catching up to that sign. <laughs> well, uh, so certainly they were spending on Wall Street this, this afternoon, Susan. I mean, look, this was a stunning uh, move. This was the biggest point gain ever for the Dow Jones Industrial. Not percentage, but point gain. And it was amazing. I have to say, however, from my perspective, this was what they call a bear market rip. Uh, still, 1,500 new 52-week lows today, only about 8 52-week highs. And, you know, you've heard this a lot today that we were oversold, where before today's session, every index was about 12% below its 50-day moving average. Right. We weren't just oversold. We were extremely oversold. So I'm glad to see the market higher today, but I simply don't think we're out of the okay. woods still yet. Yes, this exactly. is still a bear market. Because people are using the term dead cat bounce. Uh, Melissa, yeah. you know, there's this short covering taking place with this 1,000-point uh, gain. There might be some short covering because obviously if you shorted the market in the last two weeks, you made money. But I really think there was some decent buying that came in today because the rally was big. And what I'd like to see is the market between tonight and the after hours and tomorrow morning gap up over that 23,000 number in the Dow. That should see some follow through tomorrow. The market has been lacking follow through. So whether it's a dead cap bounce or whether it's profit taking, what we have to see. Because what we need is a nice, solid three-day rally to follow through with this, which the market hasn't been able to do for like a month. Yeah, it's called consolidation. Yeah. John, I think, do you think we'll see it? There needs to be some conviction, I think, in the buying. Yeah, I mean, that, that's just, even with today's massive rally, again, the biggest point gain in Dow history, the market is still essentially down for the year yep. and down 10% just this month. So we've got a lot of room to make up. But, you know, I, I agree with the point. It, it's now or never. This market either has to show some strength in technology, in financials. You know, a lot of the financials, Goldman Sachs, Northern Trust, new 52-week lows today. So I'm happy to say the move today in the market, but we have to see some sustained buying if this is going to be anything other than a dead yeah, cap of financials really was confusing for the market since we are in a higher interest rate environment, right, Melissa? Also, the consumer is strong. People are still buying homes. So, you know, maybe this is a, a realization that financials might be a good place to park your cash. Honestly, none of the bank stocks, to be honest, look good right now. I wouldn't say any of them look good. Even even the leading market leaders like Apple don't look great right now. The market actually today why? was whoa, more... Whoa, 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 whoa. As, well, let's back it up. Why, why don't they look good too? As, are you looking at fundamentals they, or what are you no, looking no, no, at? No, no, no. I'm saying... I'm a chartist. Remember the technicals. The technicals of these charts, even though they're holding the uptrend, are barely hanging on. They're hanging on by a thread. Any huge gap down, they would collapse. I'm not saying that these, these companies are going to go out of business. All I'm saying is, technically speaking, not fundamentally, but technically speaking, none of these charts right now, I, w I wouldn't go in and jump in and buy. And Because I'm telling you right now, this may not be the bottom. I don't know. Nobody knows. That. Even still with the market, we may have another drop off. Retest? How about a retest then? Or a retest, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. guys, we're going to talk through more of the day's rally, and there's just so much more to talk about uh, today in the news flow. Blake? Susan, including uh, President Trump, because uh, before today's massive rally, the president took on the Federal Reserve yet again. They're raising interest rates too fast. That's my opinion, but uh, I certainly have confidence, but I think it'll straighten. That the president yesterday from the Oval Office. Jonathan, I see you shaking your head. What do you say? Yeah, th th this I think was really, if you want to know what really essentially freaked the market out, particularly on Christmas Eve, it was the president and I believe Tre Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin's involvement. You know, we always say that the market hates uncertainty, but uncertainty over, you know, how many Pampers Walmart is going to sell, that traders can figure out. But government's involvement, whether or not this group will get tariffs or the Treasury Secretary will be replaced over the Federal Reserve Chair will be replaced. It's that type of intervention, Blake, that I think really worries traders, and it's exactly why you saw so much of a plunge on uh, uh, Christmas Eve, and why I think, I have to say, you saw the market do so well today. Not a lot of tweeting from the president about the market today, and I have to say, I think that's one of the reasons why we had this rally. Melissa, you subscribe to that thinking, or no? Well, now, honestly, people are dumping their losers into the end of the year, because they can write them off, and you have to dump them by December 31st. So people, uh, people dump their losers, I think, in the last few weeks. It may or may not have anything to do with the tweets or anything that occurred on Christmas Eve. Remember, a lot of people are already off. They took the whole week off because of the holiday being on the Monday and the Tuesday. I'll tell you what caught my eye, uh, what the president said yesterday, uh, a part of that clip or, or just after it. The president seemed to accept that this interest rate uh, hike from the Federal Reserve and where we are now might be the new norm. Watch President Trump here from yesterday and I'll get your reaction on the other side. We have a normalized interest rate. 
A normalized interest rate means a lot. You know, it's good for a lot of people. They uh, have money in the bank, they get interest on their money. For many years, nobody got interest on their money. I, I think that might have been the first time, Jonathan, I heard the president say, hey, um, you know, higher rates could be good. <laughs> well, I mean, no, normalized rates, I think, would be good. I mean, in, in fact, you know, we've been living essentially, uh, Blake, as you know, in, in a surreal, non-real economic environment for almost 10, year, 10 years now with these ultra ultra low interest rates. To the extent that the Fed can normalize and ideally get out of the way, I think the market, even with higher rates, can go higher as a result. Well, listen, on the back end of that soundbite, the president also said, quote, I think it's a tremendous opportunity to buy. He might have been proven right today, but what about in the long run? I think Trump is looking at fundamentally how strong the economy is, and that's why he's saying for people to buy. He's not speaking specifically right this second, buy today and sell tomorrow. He's looking long term. A long term, the economy is strong. It should continue to stay strong into 2019. The problem is that if the Fed raises rates too quickly, too fast, it could spook the market again in the first quarter of 2019. Now, they did it this time, and I think they did it because they felt the need to assert their independence because Trump tweeted that he didn't want them to raise rates. So that's said and done. The bottom line is, in the first quarter, I think it's going to be touch and go, and the Fed needs a little back off a little bit. Melissa, Jonathan, a thousand plus point move today, so stay right there. You're not done. <laughs> we might come to you for hours. Thank you. Uh, we'll get back to you in a bit. Meantime, Jeff 